How's it going guys? I'm John and in this video I'm going to show you what I think is the ultimate phone mount for your Ninja 1000 or Z1000SX. One of the first mods I did when I got my Ninja 1000 was install the X-Grip from RAM mount. And this is a mount that I've had experience with uh, in the past on my FC09. And to install this I used the RAM mount uh, fork stem mount which uh, I've got a video on that installation and it was kind of a tricky installation because the stem cap on the Ninja 1000 doesn't really work with standard fork stem mounts. Um, and there's also a few other little things about this that I didn't love. So I was kind of looking to see what else is on the market um, that might be an improvement. And what I've got here I think is really the ultimate solution uh, if you're looking to install your phone on your Ninja 1000 or Z1000SX. So the, one of the difficulties with installing a fork stem mount on the Ninja 1000 is that the fork stem cap doesn't have a smooth circular hole in the stem mount. It's actually a 12 millimeter hex. And so uh, fork stem mounts like the one from Ram mount or even the one from Quad Lock, um, they're designed to go into a smooth hole and then they expand and lock in. Uh, but because of the way this is designed, those don't actually work very well. There's not enough contact area to get a secure connection. So the solution I found uh, is this part right here, and I'll have a link to this down in the description. I found this on Amazon, and I'm not sure who makes it, but it's a very well-made part. It's all machined aluminum, and as you can see, it's got a hex shape to it, and this is designed to fit right into the 12 millimeter hole in the stem cap, and you can see it's a perfect fit. And then you take off this cap on top, and then there's a little Allen bolt. You tighten that, and then this expands and locks in very securely. And then it gives you a one inch ball that's compatible with RAM mount or other um, third party mounts that use this one inch ball system. Now for the main part of this phone mount system, I'm using a quad lock system. And so that requires either getting a special phone case for your phone, or if they don't have that available, or if you wanna use whatever phone case you're using now, um, they sell these um, attachment points that you can stick directly onto the back of your phone or your phone case. So for my iPhone XR, this is the case for it. You can see it's pretty low profile, but it does have this little recessed area in the back, and that's what interfaces with the phone mount. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the rest of the components that I'm gonna use for this phone mount, and most of these come from Quad Lock. Uh, the first is the wireless charging head. So if your phone has um, capability for wireless charging, then when you mount the phone on here, it'll actually charge up. And this has a USB-C connection on the back for power. And it includes two USB-C cables. One's a little bit shorter and the other one is longer. And the cables are specially designed where they have the seal uh, for the part that connects into the bottom of the charger and that's what keeps it weatherproof. The next piece is gonna be this vibration dampener and this mounts just below the charging head and it'll help isolate your phone from uh, vibrations from the motorcycle. And although I've never had a problem with it, I hear more and more stories about uh, people's camera systems on their phone being damaged uh, just from the engine and road vibration that they're subjected to when they're mounted on your motorcycle. Uh, so I think this will be a good solution to help keep your phone isolated from that vibration and keep it protected. The vibration dampener is gonna be mounted on this. And this is a RAM mount adapter that has uh, the one inch ball on the bottom and then it has the quad lock mount on top. We're actually gonna take off this quad lock mount here because we're going to replace it with a vibration dampener and then the charging head on top. And then the last piece to talk about is this short connector arm and this is a ram mount piece and this is going to connect the ball from the fork stem mount to the ball for the quad lock mount. All right the first step of this installation is going to be to remove this original mount from the ball mount so that we can replace it with the vibration dampener. The vibration dampener has a built-in bolt that's held captive down here, and so to access it, you just put an Allen wrench through this threaded hole right here. All right, the next step is gonna to be to mount the wireless charging head, and you can orient this in different ways. Um, in order to remove the phone, you need to press down on these two extensions that are on the side. And so because I prefer to have my phone mounted in landscape, I want these facing up and down. So this is how I'm gonna have this oriented on the bike. All 
All right, so to get this on the bike, what we're gonna do first is install uh, this ball mount in the fork stem cap. Then we'll use this connector to connect this mount to the phone mount. All right, actually getting this thing installed on the bike is gonna be really easy. The first thing we're gonna do is drop in uh, the fork stem mount adapter, just like that. And then you're gonna use a five millimeter Allen wrench to tighten this up. Once that's tight, you can see that it's totally rock solid. Then replace the little rubber cap on the top. Next, you're gonna use the RAM mount short connector to connect uh, the ball from this mount to the ball on the phone mount. All right, the last step is just to hook up your USB power to the wireless charging head, and you can plug your USB cable into any USB socket on the bike. Um, I'm plugging mine into one that I installed that's kind of hidden uh, underneath one of the fairings, so it's protected from the weather. And uh, you can see a video on that installation uh, up in the corner above or down in the description below. Um, one important thing to note though is this wireless charging head, even if there's no phone on it, it will use a little bit of power if it's on. So if you have this connected to a USB source that doesn't turn off when you turn the bike off, then you'll have to use the power switch, which is just below this LED, uh, to turn off the, wireling char the wireless charging head so that you don't drain your battery. Uh, for my installation though, uh, the USB socket that I'm connected, connecting to is um, switched with the ignition. So when I turn the bike off, uh, this wireless charging head will also turn off. All right, now that we have power run to the charging head, all we have to do is turn on the ignition and this will turn on. And then you just gotta connect the phone, just like that. And now it's charging up. All right guys, well that wraps up the installation. I'm really happy with this one. This one is easy and overall it's a really clean and simple installation. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below and as always, thanks for watching.